Hey guys, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of The Six Show. And as always, I'm super pumped to be here. I'm here with my main man, B. How are you feeling today, brother? Brilliant. <laughs> He's feeling the love. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the show, I'm going to share you a little story of how the assignment for the lounge has inspired me to, uh, to create this awesome macro that I'm also going to inspire you with. Yeah, and I interview Matthew Shipp, a photographer from the Share Inspire Create Lounge, and he gives us great tips on what to do in your first commercial photo shoot. Awesome, man. Let's get into it. Enjoy. The Six Show. Share, inspire, create.com. Share. All right, guys, I'm going to share with you a little story about a little photography trip I went on and all inspired by one of our assignments from the sick lounge. So what we encourage our people in the lounge to do, our people, our people, yeah. the people in the community. The photographers. Yeah, the, the photographers to the do. The photographers. Yeah, yeah, that's it, is uh, to go out in the field and capture an image related to the monthly assignment. Yeah. And this one happened to be detailed, which I love, because I love going and shooting mm -hmm. macro. So I went out this beautiful morning. It wasn't much of a sunrise, so it was a perfect time for macro. And I found these beautiful bits of dew glistening in the sun, just on grass. Ah, lovely. And if you can isolate a subject like that, it makes for a beautiful, beautiful macro image. But the, sto the moral of the story is, it forced me to go out and look for something to capture for the assignment and use skills that I may not normally do, you know? Yeah. Because if I'm a, a landscape photographer and I go out and I just shoot wide all the time, and I love yeah. shooting wide, and there's nothing wrong with shooting wide, but it's forcing me to to narrow down whether it's a long lens or a macro lens and pick out details in the landscape and for me to learn, you know, just a different way of yeah. photography. And I think that's what's so powerful about the assignment, yeah. mate. So it takes you out of your comfort zone. It does. And it gives you something to focus on. Yes. So something new that you may not do every day. And it, and it gives you inspiration too. Yeah. You know, it gives you the inspiration to go out and do something different. You know, that's okay. awesome. So there you go. Are we going to see this image? Yeah, let's do it. Let's okay. go to the next section. Inspire. All right, guys, here's the macro image I was telling you about. And you can see here what it is. It's a, it's a portrait image and there's a curl, just a slight curl in the grass that comes down and right at the bottom, in the bottom left lower third, there's a water droplet. And I think it's just, it's, you know, it's a simple subject, something that can be found really easily. But when it's isolated like this with the, the green tones in the background, I think it just makes for a beautiful image. Yeah, lovely, man. I love it. And yeah. I just love the way my eye comes in from the top right and goes all the way down to that uh, water droplet. And the water droplet is super sharp, man. Can you zoom in on that? Yeah, yep, yep. All right, awesome. There yeah, you so go. you can see. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love it. And look at that uh, magnification through the water droplet. So you can see the, the backs of the grass, the mm. back of the grass magnified through the water droplet. And love it, man. It's, uh, what, um, so what lens did you shoot this with? So from? I've got a 105 macro. Okay. Okay. And I often put my 1.4 converter on it because the 105 macro is yeah. a 2.8. It's only around a thousand dollar lens, so it's not, okay. you know, it's not like a a massive expensive macro lens because yeah. you you know you can get the the 180 and the 200 mil lens for you know a couple of thousand dollars, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So so what I tend to do because it's nice with a macro lens to have a bit of length. You can get cheaper ones that are around 60 mil and stuff like that. But the problem is you you got to get so close to your subject, it makes yeah. it really hard to capture macro. Yeah. So I've got the 105, it's sort of a mid-range lens. I put my teleconverter I've got on it, which then makes it a uh, f4 lens because okay. you only lose you one, lose stop, one stop with yeah. the 1.4. But then that gets me around 150 mil. Okay. So which nice. is which is good. And you're shooting yeah. that on a full frame. So that's camera. on the full frame. And yes, and then we go to a crop, we can add another 75 mil. So I get over my 200 millimeters right. on my crop body, which okay. I could do. Yeah. You know, um, I decided to use the full frame for this because I was shooting a slightly higher ISO. I was shooting uh, 800 ISO for this image. Okay. And the reason was there was a slight breeze in, in the morning, right. so the subject was moving. So I had to take the shot in between. Gust, little gust, not okay. slight, you know, obviously yeah. something this small, we're talking the drop is like, you know, as big as my, smaller than my little thumbnail. Yeah. So you can imagine, even me breathing has got this thing yeah, moving. So, yeah. so, so it was reasonably fast shutter speed. Yeah, that's one, it. One, one one, and that's right. So I cranked the ISO to yeah. do that. But guys, I still had it set up on a tripod. I still manually focused. Uh, a good tip with macro too, if you manually focus in live view and then zoom into the subject where you want that, that uh, point of interest and just, just um, dial in a bit of manual focus and that's how you get your focus All spot right, on okay. with this. Yeah. yeah, so, and I did shoot at F8 
Um, and the reason why F8 is because there is a t- there was that tiny bit of movement. Oh, I so mean, just going, to give me a slightly, uh, a, okay. slightly a wider depth of field. Yeah, that's okay. all. Yeah. You know, so, so the grass was moving away and back towards you a little bit. Well, so it, was mo- it was moving uh, all, all over. All so you just okay. sort of had to wait. You know, and I didn't, wouldn't have had time to refocus in between the gusts of wind. So yeah. all these little things to think about when yeah. you capture this. Now, and then you compose it. So that's how you actually shot it. <clears throat> did you crop in at all, or is I cropped a tiny bit because. Okay. I, I probably, I probably could have shot this on my crop body, to be honest. Okay. Tip toe was a little bit longer land. Okay. But, so it has been cropped a tiny bit. But, you know, I had this image in mind. I knew when I shot this that yeah. I wanted to have the line coming down from the top right and into the bottom and left lower okay. third like that and where mm-hmm. I had... So I already had it and envisaged where I was going to crop this in the mm-hmm. field. And that's something that's good to have inside where you're going to... Where you want to finally take your image, you know. Mm-hmm. So a couple of things I would have done different. Yeah. And I've got to say, one of these tips has come from the lounge, okay? Yeah. If you get something black when you're shooting water droplets and you put it near the subject as close as you can without putting it in the frame, yeah. what that black thing will do, it will get picked up by that water droplet and actually give it a bit of an outline. Ah, so more so contrast. It'll, yeah, more it'll add a bit more contrast. And you can see it could probably do with a little bit just yeah. around that top edge, you know? Yeah. So that's one thing I would have done different. Second thing I would have done different and... I did a fairly good job of removing everything brown. There was a couple of browner leads in the background there. Yeah. So the background is as, as as important as the foreground when you're yeah. shooting so shallow like this. Yeah. Um, so I did remove brown things in the background, which is great. But you know what? There's still one distracting thing that if I didn't point it out, you probably wouldn't see it. That over there? Yeah. That line? Yeah. So yeah, there's that... a line coming down. There's yeah. a line of grass coming down from the top left, left. to yeah. the center. Yeah. I would have liked to remove that. Okay. So it was... There's, there was no, there was nothing in that scene that would distract, distract your eyes except yeah. that one thing. Yeah. So that's a, my few tips for macro, mate. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. I, mean, I love that image. It's such a beautiful, I mean, I'd love to actually print that and put it on a wall really, really large. I mean, that's the kind of thing that people would invest in yeah. and, beautiful. And, and hang, you know, because yeah. it's, it is just a beautiful uh, green we should just call it green, right? The green. The green. Green yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah, great. That's it, guys. Uh, that's uh, that's how I that's how I go about. This. Well, that's how I went about this macro shot. Okay. Anyway, awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for that, Johnny. Create. Okay, guys. In the create section, I'm going to show you an interview that I did with uh, Matthew Ship. He's one of the members in the the Share Inspire Create Lounge, and it's a case study of a commercial shoot. It's his very first commercial shoot, and he photographed the pub, and he wanted to. Um, you know, do it the right way. So he asked a lot of questions in the lounge. He got all sorts of feedback. Then he actually went out, photographed the pub, came back with all these images. And in this interview, he gives me like three or four really good tips. If you're going to do a commercial photo shoot for the first time and you're a little bit scared, you should watch this interview. It's really cool. That's amazing. Hey, I've got a question for you. What yeah. did he photograph? A pub. A pub. A pub. A pub. AKA, no, actually, AKA a bar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah. man. Let's get into the interview, bro. Awesome. Enjoy. All right. Hey, guys. It's uh, Brent here from the shareinspirecreate.com or the, the sick show or the sick lounge. And today I got Matthew on the other line there. Uh, Matthew Ship is a, a member in the sick lounge forum, the community we got for photographers. And I'm just going to run through a little case study uh, of uh, that Matthew had when he had a problem, a photography problem. He put it into the forum and got some answers. How are you doing, Matthew? Pretty good. How are you? Yeah, great, great. And tell, tell whoever's watching this where you're from. I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, okay. Right, right middle of the country. So. Ah, good, awesome. And um, awesome. So let's just jump straight in. What Matthew did was uh, he started a thread in the, um, in the forum called Dark Room Shiny Objects. And uh, tell us a little bit about the shoot, Matthew. What what was your your main problem that you thought was going to happen um, at this commercial shoot that you that you had? My initial, my initial problem was um, you see in the background of this picture all the uh, the gleaming glass objects and everything, and I was really worried about um, having being overwhelmed with specular highlights. Um, and in the end, when I got there, uh, that wasn't the case because it was a cloudy, rainy, horrible day. <laughs> so. I, okay. I had I had a new I had a newer challenge um, that, that came to me and that was um, shooting uh, shooting a very low light. Oh, okay, so initially, just so people know, you were commissioned by this pub or this uh, 
its restaurant to yeah. photograph it for um, for advertising purposes, right? To try and attract people to this place. Yeah, that um, that's Brian there in the picture. He, I just snapped okay. that. I belonged to this um, wine club for a while now, and I snapped that picture, put it up on Facebook, told him, just says, "Hey, look, look, look where I've been." And he contacted me later, says, saying, "I really uh, captured the mood in that shot. He wanted if I would want to do some photos." And I was, you know, great. Um, so we went in, uh, uh, talked what I was going to do, talked price, and um, it was a half day process. He wanted me to shoot his bar, to really show off the wine bar and yep. um, mostly for social media and then later on that night he wanted me to come back and shoot um, an event he had with a, with a local band and people having a good time and i tried to uh, try to do my best best to portray both of those so um he's a uh, um seemed to be pretty happy with them um a few of the challenges i had was um in the middle of a shoot um my one of my my backup battery gave out and um <laughs> so i was uh, <laughs> limping along on a half dead battery until my uh, wife saved me and, and brought in a new battery um and then uh but i, I uh, that was just one of the challenges some of the challenges you see with a lot of low light um so i had a lot of long exposures um yeah uh there was learn there was some flash stuff in there and i had a lot to learn about um but uh there were some great suggestions on the uh in the post on uh, using gels or just warming it up in lightroom posts um, which I did give it a warm feeling because that that place there always has this kind of a warm glow to it anyway. So I really wanted to portray that. Um, so that was some good advice. Um, and I think you gave me a couple pieces of advice about uh, getting close to, um, and uh, getting that nice shallow creamy depth uh, um, bokeh and uh, using it to isolate um, yep. isolate images of the wine bottles and such. Totally. And I, if I remember right, I, I asked you a lot of questions about you know, what was the purpose of the shoot? What were you trying to do? What is the final outcome that the owner wanted? So why, basically, why are they paying you to 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 shoot it? And you know, it's ba and I think you said it was to attract people. They put it on their website, show how friendly the pub is, you know, and uh, also get people that are happy and kind of mingling around and give it that warm feeling. Yes. So, so I think. You know that's that's a lot of important things. If anyone's ever doing a commercial shoot, and I do quite a few of them, I sit down with the client, you know, for quite a long time, and we kind of run through why they want me to shoot it. Because often now people will come to you and they'll say, "Look, can you photograph my uh, bar or my pub or restaurant?" And you don't know why they want to do that. So if you just go in and photograph it just the way it is, you the customer probably won't be happy because yeah. they actually want a certain look to attract the certain customer. So um, so those are a lot of questions I asked you. And I, uh, did it get you thinking at all? Yeah, and there was also those questions I relayed to the customer as well and it kind of helped him, uh, help both of us gel together um, some ideas. So um, yeah, he, he was really into just selling the mood of the place. So that's what that was the, probably the most useful piece of information I got out of him. Okay, cool. And I know a lot of other people um, put comments in there too. Uh, Matthew, what what else did you take out of the the sick lounge, the community? You know, once you put it in there, uh, maybe I should ask the question a little bit differently. Would you have photographed the place differently if you didn't get this information from everyone in the community? Um, maybe a little different. I, I don't think I um, my my thinking wasn't as focused until after I talked to the community. That kind of helped focus me in again, relay that information to the customer and. Together, we both came to a better idea, understanding of what he wanted. So, yeah, okay. I think I was a little more scattered beforehand and I was a little more focused afterwards. What, All what right. So, so, any tips you can give people that are doing a first time commercial shoot? You know, what, like a couple of things that you learned from the shoot and even things that you learned before the shoot, what, you know, the certain questions you should maybe ask, setting the expectation of the customer and what things could go wrong and how you should, uh, kind of prepare for things that might happen during the shoot? First step, triple check your equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your batteries explode on you in the middle of the shoot. That's not the bad, 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 bad deal. Um, okay, so with the batteries exploding, like what, it what actually happened? I mean, it, out. it just did not, it, it gave me, it had a full charge on it and I put it in my battery and said, no longer compatible with this camera. I'm like, what? Oh. I've been using the battery for two years and had no problems, so yeah. No matter what I did, 
So just stop recognizing okay. the camera. So I have yeah. extra batteries, uh, extra yeah. equipment, yeah. backup equipment. equipment. Um, it doesn't hurt to uh, rent before you buy. I did rent a lens for this, a wide angle, with something I was lacking, and that really saved me. In fact, I probably used that about 60% of the time. Um, oh, that's a good, good, really good tip. Yeah. Um, you can save some money on the, on the back end with that, especially if you're not going to use that lens a lot. Um, yep. you rent for the situation. Um, yep. And can yeah. you actually pass that, that um, rental charge or the rental cost onto the customer? So can you add it to your invoice or factor it in somehow? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I did a little bit, um, and uh, uh, I probably should have factored in a little more, but um, that, that, that's another thing, lessons learned. Um, first time doing a real business shoot, so um, that, that next time through, I'll, I'll know a little more. No, know a little more the second time through. Yeah, so about like pricing and actually pricing your time. And, yeah, because did it take you a lot longer than you expected, like with the editing, the post processing of the photo shoot? Um, the post didn't quite take as long as I, it, it took about as long as I expected. What took me a lot longer was um, once I was in there shooting, realizing, okay, I only got so much time to get, this, to get all this done. And then, and even though I made, and that was another thing I did, make a checklist. It is, okay. if you do not make a checklist, you're going to be wandering around aimlessly, like a, just completely lost. When you get all these great ideas in your mind, but when you, once you get down to the photography, you've got to do the work, that goes yeah. out the window. So yeah, have a checklist with you. That's um, a great, you. great tip there, Matthew. And whenever I've photographed weddings, I always had a checklist, uh, basically a, a shot list of all the images that I had to have and then some optional images. So I put the, maybe the top 10 images that I had to have and then I'd go for the optional ones if I had time. Because yeah, you're right, when you get stressed and there's people around you and everyone's kind of breathing down your neck when you're photographing and you're thinking about lighting and you're thinking about where people should be and what their mood should be. And there's so many other things to think about. And if you, and with that stress, sometimes you might forget which images you should be actually capturing. So that, yeah, that's a great tip for everyone. You know, a check checklist or a, a shot list. Yeah, surprisingly, awesome. the prep time before the shoot took me a lot longer, a lot more time than I expected than at the actual after the shoot and post-processing. All right, so give me times that you think you actually spent on this project. How much time? Um, I probably spent, I don't know, uh, six, seven hours before I even do the shoot, just setting up, getting ideas, hunting down for examples. I, I, I'll go through other photography places with shot bars and get ideas, pull those ideas in, and kind of build myself a uh, kind of a mental shot list, and then turn that shot list into a checklist. So there was a lot more upfront than I expected. So, you know, five, six hours, easy. Um, okay. And then and the actual uh, shoot? And then the actual shoot, the actual shoot was almost a half day. I started at about one o'clock. I shot till um, about five and then I got dinner. I came back and shot for another about three or four hours, probably three hours. Okay. Um, okay, and so that, that, was, that was the event with the band and the people and the pub. Right. And then by that time, um, yeah. I was at the, my creative, at the end of my real creatively. I <laughs> couldn't come up with any more interesting things to do. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the post-processing part? Uh, post processing, um, I think over about um, two days um, at about an hour and a half, two hours um, each day. Um, okay. All right. So, so in, in total, in total, I'm seeing two and a half days of work, right, mm -hmm. for that job. Yeah. yeah. Maybe more. Maybe three days with going back and forth to the client, you know, submitting invoices and stuff. So maybe three working days uh mm -hmm. for, for you and uh did do you think you charged accordingly no <laughs> <laughs> way less than i should have but yeah, so, I, I was i wasn't I, I myself wasn't um i was confident as i could be but just going into the unknown i wanted yeah. to be fair to him um he asked me i've been a customer of his for a long time so it's the yeah. first time the roles had flops um, yep. So there was a lot of things going on, but you did give me a good piece of advice when I was kind of nervous about doing it. Was fake it until you make it. Yes. So um, and did it work? Uh, yeah, it helped. He kind of he asked a few questions, like yeah, I, I you know I, I I occasionally I use the terms working knowledge. Um, of, okay. of what <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, now I have that knowledge. So yep. awesome.
Well, thanks for that, Matthew. You've, um, you've given us some great tips and anyone watching this, some great tips for when you're doing a commercial shoot. And I think, yeah, one of the, the, one of the good tips is fake it before you make it. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have all this experience when you go do a commercial shoot. You just need to have the confidence that you can actually get through it okay. And, and, um, and charge the, or the second bit of advice I would say from this, um, from this commercial shoot is charge for the actual hours you put in. So if you think the shoot's going to be one or two hours, it's, end up, it's going to end up being three days of your time. So three, eight hours of working, which actually might be longer because you don't always work eight hours in a day when you're working for yourself. You maybe only work five hours. So it actually might be longer. And then also take spare batteries and spare, um, you know, equipment, uh, rent equipment. That's a really good one that you that you gave uh, the people watching this. Uh, rent equipment. You don't have to buy. You don't have to have all the best gear. You just rent it for the day. And I would say you need to put that in the invoice to your customer as um, equipment costs. Uh, you know, special equipment costs for this uh, certain event. And um, and a checklist. Having a checklist of um, things that you want to photograph. I think that's a great, great suggestion. Now, anything else, Matthew, you want to say about the lounge and, you know, how it's helped you with your photography? And I'll, I'll share the screen of the, the, the Share Inspire Create Lounge again. Um, really, it seems like everybody's there to help each other out, um, share knowledge as much as they can, um, ask lots of questions. Um, that's the best thing is that this gives me a place to ask lots of questions to get a lot of opinions back. Um, and, uh, yeah, you and Johnny just have a, I don't know, this unending well of energy to keep up with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but you do. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really nice, great place to be. It's, it's, everybody's really there to help you. Um, and you know, when I have a piece of information, I think I feel I can share, I go ahead and do that as well. Um, the critiques are particularly helpful. Um, yeah. You know, not everybody's uh, going to be there and say, oh, it's a great photo, it's a great photo. There's actually some true feedback. And, and that's, yeah. you know, that's even a learning process. Um, and that's yeah, even a good, sure. a good skill you're going to develop if you're part of the community. Yeah, and I'm just running through it now. I'm actually running through the little bit about where people actually put their images in there and they get feedback, uh, positive, encouraging feedback from from people in the lounge, you know, what's, what's wrong with this picture? And then also we've got the media section, which I, I love is, you know, you can jump into this section here and have a look at what people are actually posting and give everyone feedback on, on the images they're posting. So there's some really good stuff there. Matthew, thank you so much for, for being on this, uh, you know, this real life case study of what's happening in the, in the sick lounge. I really appreciate it. Any last advice you can give to, Anyone wanting to improve their photography, what's the, the, the best thing they can do right now? Um, keep shooting and find a group of people that are happy to help. I think awesome. that's a lot of places to be. Great. Well, thanks, Matthew. Really appreciate it. And I'll catch you later. Thank you. So, so there you go, man. It's been another epic show, Brent, man. Um, I, I'm still so inspired looking at that image I took, you know, and, and it's just... You know what, as a photographer, it's all about, and I've mentioned this before, it's all about the feeling you get while you're out there. And I remember that warm winter, sunny, you know, sunny sort of morning and, and, the, and the droplets glistening, you know, yeah. on the grass and just walking out through the bush and the birds. And I just love it, mate. And it's absolutely. Now, because it's autumn, you kind of miss that, don't you? Yeah, actually, the, it's still autumn. The, the war, but it's starting to summer. get colder. So yeah. <laughs> as soon as it gets colder, I say it's winter, but yeah. it's not winter yet. No, yeah. not yet. Yeah. <laughs> And great, man, thanks for sharing that and how you've actually photographed it. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. image. And then, um, and then Matthew's interview. You know, the one thing that Matthew said back to me that I actually gave him a suggestion, he said, fake it before you make it. Yeah, it's true. And, it's so and that's true. something I, you know, I say to everyone when they're getting into it, you know, because you can't have that experience until you get that experience. experience. Yeah. So how do you get that experience if you aren't confident? I'm getting experience. And so you've got to fake it before you make it. You've got to imagine what you would be like if you actually had that experience yep. and you were that experienced professional photographer and then go in and shoot it as if you were that person. Yeah, and, and chances are, but you've done a lot of photography before this paid or commercial shoot, you know. Yeah. You, you're pretty well, you know your camera well and you t must be taking good images, you know. You, so. you are, but it's just <laughs> something new. It's a, it's a unknown. It's a yeah. out of, way out of your comfort zone. You don't know how to quite do mm. it yet. And that's what's great about the lounge. You know, you put these uh, questions or these problems 
questions into the lounge and you get feedback from people that have done it before. Yeah, I just love the fact that he <clears throat> put in the scenario and then we gave him all these ideas and options of how to go about it. Yeah. He's implemented that and come back with such a great yeah. result. And he actually took the, took the questions that I asked him and he put them to the bar owner, the pub owner. You know, what's it for? Why do you want these images? How are you going to use them? And then he uh, you know, planned the shoot from there, put together a checklist oh, awesome. of all the things that he needed to photograph because when you're on the shoot, you might be a little stressed because you actually don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so it's really good to have a shot list of the, the actual photos, the photos that you need to get so you don't forget anything. Yeah, that's a great tip. You know, and renting a lens for the day because you didn't have one. So you don't have to go out and buy this expensive lens. Yep. You just rent what you don't have for yeah. the day. And hopefully if you're a smart business person you'll actually charge the customer for the rental that's it and you get the experience and you get the images and yeah. get you know that's one one tick on you know one what am i thinking man? i don't know one, I don't, <laughs> you, need a, you need a coffee man. <laughs> well, it's a, it's one shoot under your belt that's what i was thinking yeah, there we go. Yeah. i knew there was an analogy there somewhere so, so it worked <laughs> for him he put, he, he put it into the lounge he got the feedback he actually went and did the shoot the yep. customer's happy he's happy he's got this great experience awesome, so man. that's what it's all about guys we highly encourage you if you are a photographer jump into the share inspire create lounge johnny and i and a few other hundred photographers are in there to help you yep there's a few hundred of us now mate mm. it's solid and I strong know. and guys we've got this special deal for you check out the link and the annotation here and uh yeah come and check it out and we'd love to see you in there mate because uh, i'm in there every day and i'm super yeah. pumped and mate that's exactly like this assignment thing without the lounge being yeah. there and having that um, assignment, the monthly assignment for me to go out and shoot for, you know, I wouldn't have created this beautiful image and I, I wouldn't be as inspired about, you know, shooting macro again as I am now. Yeah, so, good. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching the show. It's been another epic one. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did creating it for you. And as always, please leave your feedback below this post and uh, share. Give, yeah, share yeah. the love. Share the photo love, y'all, because that's all you need to do. Share this post and, and get the word out about the show because I know me and Brent, all we want to do Brent and myself, because that's the proper English. <laughs> Brent, Brent and myself, <laughs> all we want to do is help more photographers yes. just like you master their craft. So that's that's our main goal with everything we do. So, so, yeah, so awesome. basically what Johnny's trying to say is just share the love. Share the love, Share this post. <laughs> awesome. See you Ooh. next week. Bye. Bye. To find out more, go to shareinspirecreate.com.